Good evening. It's the Two Minute Terminator. I'm Ethan McKinley, your host, and uh, we're about to embark on uh, episode two, three, three of the T3 2T. <laughs> yes! Hit the music. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you did that. Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. Hi, I'm Chief Master Sergeant William Candy. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Hi, everyone. We're back. I'm Ethan McKinley, your host, <laughs> where we uh, dismantle the Terminator franchise two minutes at a time with facts, trivia, goofs, cock-ups, and a little bit of insight, I hope. My I think I'm overselling this episode, my considering co-host. we've got so few facts on this one. Yeah. Great pitch, though. But yes, I am Ellie Fitzgerald. <laughs> How are you, Ethan? I'm fine. How are you? Stress the fuck out. <laughs> Why are you stressed out? Is this I new job killing you? Yeah. Why is it so difficult? Um, Because I'm so used to working a job where you go in and the work's already set out for you. And with this role, you go in and you've literally got an empty desk. You have to bring all the work in. They literally gave us four days of training. And this week they were like, right, you're live. Go. You can fucking do it. And it's just like, uh, and none of this us have come... this period where they just sh- start shit-canning people. Yeah, and Whoa. like the stats, the KPIs that we get given, so that's our targets, are fucking... They're just ridiculous. And they're asking us to do... Can everyone actually meet those stats? So they just do... S- like on a video game, they make it the hardest possible. And then... The people that meet them... If you get 60% of that... Basically, we're being we're being targeting at c- targeted... I can't even talk. Targeted against the other officers. But all the other recruiters have all come from a rec- recruitment background. The Rygate office, the brand new office, not one of us has come from a recruitment background. Mm-hmm. So we're literally having to learn everything from scratch. I mean, our KPIs aren't as high as everyone else's, but oh. they're still pretty fucking high. Anyway, <laughs> so I've just had a very stressful day and I finished later. I woke up in the pitch black and I came home in the pitch black. Well, that sucks. And I got the wrong fucking potato. Well... How's that potato? Uh, right. Anyway, we're <laughs> going for uh, we're going for minutes uh, two minutes until four minutes. The two two minute uh, bridging that gap, and essentially it's uh, a bit of background really on uh, John Connor where he is now. I guess maybe ten or twelve years have elapsed. Uh, we see Nick Stahl, who plays John Connor, playing John Connor. Uh, Nick really Stahl, of course. Know. I don't know why they put him in this part. He, he looks like Eight Man. Is yeah. he? Is he? Has he been in a film where he plays a monkey? No. Really? Yeah. He's f- quite simian looking. Really simian. <laughs> At first I thought, was he the kid um, in Jumanji? You know when he turns into a monkey? <laughs> His face is literally exactly like that. But I was like, actually, no, it wasn't him. Uh, yeah. No, Nick Stahl, of course, was, uh, I guess Stahl. at the time, famous in 2003. did a film called In the Bedroom, which Never was out in 2001. It. it got a lot of acclaim. It was nominated for Best Picture and stuff. You know, you know, know about it? Never heard of it. Uh, basically, a New, Engl- <laughs> a New England couple's college-age son dates an older woman who has two small children and an unwelcome ex-husband. Well, that sounds fucking bullshit. It stars Sissy Spacek, <laughs> Tom Wilkinson from The Four Monty, Nick Stahl, Marissa Tomei, and William Mapova. Now, that's an interesting... Uh, Cast. <laughs> well, no, William Mapova is actually Tom Cruise's, I think, cousin. There Whoa. he is, Ellie. Here's a lovely picture of William Mapother. <laughs> Mapother is actually the Cruise. He's actually name. worse looking than Tom. Well, Tom Cruise's real name is Thomas Cruise Mapother the third or the fourth. What? So this is William. His, uh, <laughs> I think he's his cousin. Oh uh, <laughs> Do you reckon they've all got barrel bodies? Yeah. <laughs> if anyone's wondering what that actually means, if you watch Tom Cruise, any ep- of his films where he's topless. Well, yeah, yeah, especially <laughs> in Rock of Ages, he's kind of like a little bit overweight, and he's got like this like fat pilot whale type body. Well, it's not even that he's he's ridiculously overweight. It, I think it is just the general shape of his torso. It is barrel like. <laughs> it there's literally no other way to describe you need it. You to watch Jack Reach when he stands in the doorway taking his shirt off. It's been dried. I think he's just had sexy. a shower, and he's leaning on the door, and you're thinking, this wouldn't have worked when you were thirty. It's <laughs> creepy. <laughs> Now you're 52. It's really creepy. Don't get me wrong, Tom. I'm a big fan, but the put biggest, the shirt on, dude. The biggest fan. Put the shirt on. Anyway, William Mapother's been in Mission Impossible 2. He was one of Dugray Scott's men. He's been in The Grudge with Sarah oh, Michelle Gellar. Another Earth, which is 2011. Never heard of that. But anyway. Well, I've heard of one of his films. And then he was in this. 
Has <laughs> he done anything since? Oh yeah, no, he's still doing stuff. Uh, it's just uh, curious that he's Tom Cruise's uh, cousin. He's in Minority Report, the series, which is obviously based off the Tom Cruise movie, which is we based on a Philip K. Dick right? short story. No, we're going to come back to Mitch Star. Oh, so we're talk still talking about Schmooze's cousin. Schmooze's Price cousin, removed. basically. <laughs> In fact, is he his cousin? Let's, let's just check. Trivia. Younger cousin of Tom Cruise and Leanne DeVitt. Do you reckon he's a um, Scientologist? I don't know. Maybe not. I know uh, Tom Cruise's family. I think his sisters are a Scientologist because she got... Tom Cruise fired his publicist, Pat Kingsley, in around 2005. Isn't that essentially why him and Katie Hopkins split up? Holmes. Katie Hop oh, yeah. Not she well, she didn't want the children to be raised in Scientology. Yeah. But if you rewind to 2005, when he did jump on the couch and went crazy. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I'm so in love with Spielberg it. got upset with him because he started talking about Scientology on the, like, War of the Worlds press kind of tour. All he talked about Scientology and stuff. He went Preaching on to that, words. He went on that Matt Lauer show and said, like... Uh, psychology is pseudoscience and it's Nazis Fucking and stuff and people are drugging people and and uh, Brooke Shields shouldn't be maybe taking anti Maybe it's right. <laughs> well, it's when he went a bit nutty, but that year he fired Pat Kingsley, who was his longtime publicist, who kind of kept his craziness, the lid on it, essentially. <laughs> That's what your publicist does. Yeah. The people just think you're this like awesome, smiling dude and you're, hey, I'm just make movies and not the kind of crazed Scientologist which you came across as, which all Scientologists weirdly do. Make me a promise. When you become famous, don't <coughs> ever have a publicist. Oh, no. No filter. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want one. I know. I'd be in constant trouble. Yeah. He'd probably fire you. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, can, we, can you come and talk to me in this room for a second? What's that? Ethan McKinnon? Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Right, let's go back to... Nick Starr. Yeah. What do you think of the casting of Nick Starr, Ellie? I'm weak as fuck. Why? Uh, well, first first of all, like I said, he looks very Simeon-like. He doesn't look like a leader of men. I'm guessing they picked him because he kind of looks a little bit like uh, Carl Reeves. I don't know. He just doesn't look like a leader of men to me. He's quite mm. slight, isn't he? Mm. So yeah, he just seems like a really small guy, and he doesn't mm. seem to also have that kind He's of got like weakness behind the eyes. He doesn't seem to have that that kind of like uh, boys home wildness that perhaps Edward Furlong has. That kind of like Mickey Rourke dark side, which I'm sure like Ed well Edward Furlong. Obviously Plus, has I would that. imagine with uh, Connor's upbringing and everything, he'd just be a bit more badass. Yeah, I know he has to live off the grid, but he, he should be, be very worldly, shouldn't he? Well, Even though yeah. he's young. Yeah, I mean, he could easily have grown up in Dorking. Like John Connor the Kid in Terminator 2 <laughs> was a bit worldly. He was a bit of a Royce de Doyster, wasn't he? Like stealing out of uh, cash machines and hanging around with ginger kids with hockey Easy mullets. Easy money, listening to fucking Guns N' Roses. But yeah, he's been in, he was the he was the yellow bastard in Sin City. Oh my god, yeah, of course he was. But you know, maybe that could have been he anyone. Was, I don't he know. He was great in that though. But was that the makeup and the style? It of the was film probably the makeup and the big ears. <laughs> yeah, nothing against him, but he just seemed slightly miscast in this. Mm. I think he was cast quite late into it too. I think uh, all of them were. I know Kate Brewster was uh, played by Claire Danes, great actress. But do we know if anyone else was considered for the cast of John Connor in this movie? Edward Furlong. I think oh, Edward I know Furlong was going to be in it, but he was having a few substance abuse problems, mm. and. Uh, yeah. Why did you put them up then? You have a perfectly good mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Optional casting for John Connor. And also in this first two, two minutes three. and you see him, you know, rallying the troops and they've given him a scar and for some reason they've bleached his hair. Mm. What, what, why? <laughs> Is that I meant to signify You know what, Ellie? I do have all the names of the actors that played John Connor. Go! I've got it saved for a different, like, episode. Which I episode? I need to save it for that. Oh, well, there's a little cliffhanger for you. <laughs> Ethan just tweaking the, the only nipple reason, because I can't find in my copious <laughs> notes where it actually is, but I, I slipped them in there because I had, like, <laughs> one dry episode when there was nothing to actually say. So it's like, I know. Okay. We can dis... We'll, we'll basically, we'll, we're going to return to this, listeners. Next You star. will find out in episode... Oh, you'll blah, find blah, blah, out. You've got to keep them coming back. This is true. <coughs> oh, something smells really good. My thing was also in this, uh, this like, cold open where he's like, oh, I live off the grid. Something I don't still. have a phone. I can't be traced. I just have this uneasy feeling about the future. Yeah, why the fuck, as I just said before we started recording, would you live in Los Angeles where all the Terminators <laughs> have come to <laughs> fucking find and kill you? Where would you go? I'd go Mexico. Anywhere but LA. <laughs> Europe. I don't Anywhere know. but La 
<laughs> yeah. Like, it Go just, Thailand! It just seems odd that he would go live off the grid but still be in the same city. One thing I like about the uh, nuclear explosion there is the cloud starts to evaporate as the heat wave comes up. Yeah, it's so pretty. It's a nice little how did they? How did they create that? Was that water again? Uh, it's probably a mix of various different elements. It looks like it's under. It looks like an underwater vent, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't look like a nuclear explosion. Not that I know what one looks like. <laughs> and I guess none really truly does because it's too bright the flashes to actually see what's actually happening. Well, there are photographs of like the mushroom. I think the best looking like uh, nuclear explosion of recent times, even though it's a shitty movie, is the kiss King of the Crystal Skull, where he gets in the fridge I've and gets blown it. up by the nuclear bomb, and he survives. This is why everyone went crazy. They, s you know, there was jump the shark. Yeah. Uh, a phrase took over from Jump the Shark called Nuke the Fridge and it's because of Indiana Jones he's he's in like some nuclear fake town they're going to do a test a bomb oh. and he gets in a lead line refrigerator to protect from the radiation and the bomb goes off next to a nuclear bomb <laughs> and the fridge a doesn't nuclear bomb yeah the fr <laughs> forget the radiation the fridge doesn't get like fried by the heat wave it blows the fridge out of the town oh my God. hundreds of miles it lands safely and Indiana Jones gets out and goes whoo that was lucky that was lucky <laughs> And then he's looking at this giant uh, mushroom cloud. But yeah, it does. It looks more like a volcanic vent, the explosion in this, I think. It looks pretty, though. Yeah. You say it was like a, was it a miniature? I don't know. Uh, in the last episode, L Future Los Angeles, which I'm assuming that's what this is, is yeah. a mix of models and CGI. But I mean, you couldn't, you can't really tell. No. But yeah, no, he's uh, living off the grid. Uh, one of the facts for this episode, Ellie. Fact attack. Stop. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ang Lee was offered the director's chair, but he turned it down to direct 2003's The Hulk, which is probably even more panned than Terminator 3. Really? Yeah. Did you like it? I actually quite like uh, it because it's quite abstract and like an art film, but it's got The Hulk in it. Because uh, like Ang Lee is this kind of like very like artsy fartsy kind of director. I was gonna say, who the fuck is Ang Lee? Uh, he basically kind of did. A superhero film. He even played the Hulk in the motion capture stuff, which everyone thought was a bit odd. Is he as good in Blue for Igni? Uh, I the Hulk. I think is actually. An, I th actually quite like the film. I didn't mind the. I haven't seen any of them. Aren't there like three of them? No, two, three. There's the 2008 Hulk where they got the Hulk look completely wrong, even worse than the 2003 version. Uh, yeah, he the, just the way they like animated him, like the they muscles. They gave him breasts. <laughs> no, but the way they p the <laughs> muscles on the body were so sinewy and striated and weird, you could see the lines in between the muscles, like they drawn him. It just looked really crap uh. and fake. Uh, Ang Lee made Brokeback Mountain, no, uh, gay <laughs> cowboy movie. I haven't actually. Seen have you heard of it? Of course, I have. Excellent. Uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Life yes. of Pi. He's made many films of acclaim. Ellie, Ride with the Devil with uh, Heath Ledger, The Ice Storm, about swinging in the seventies, kind of. Nice. Uh, Sense and Sensibility with uh, nice. Kate Winslet. So he's done some really good films. So it was an odd choice for him. And you'd think a director of like very like acclaimed dramas, when they turn their hand to superhero genre, they might, you know, bring character out of all the kind of like the crazy action and stuff. Yeah. And it just turned out to be this kind of like bizarre, kind of weird art film. Was it more sorts. kind of like comic booky? Weirdly, out of all the comic book films, yes, it does. Actually, awesome. like when it cuts to a different scene, it kind of zooms out of the scene and goes across the but panel. But that like sounds kind of awesome, page. like an actual box. I think it is awesome. Maybe I should watch it. But everyone kind of shit all over the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> he went from green to brown. <laughs> Bulk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was offered this and he turned this down to go and do the Hulk. I guess because the Hulk had not really been done uh, on the cinema uh, before yeah. uh, on the big screen. And of course, uh, here we go. Who knows what this could have looked like if Ang Lee had been involved. Now, the future scenes, Ellie, what do you think of the old-looking John Connor with his grey hair? Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's, well, it's not even grey. It's like a really, it's like a home dye bleach kit. Like, you know when it goes a kind of yellowy colour? Mm. It's a bit brassy. But, um, yeah, I don't know why they've dyed his hair that way. I think they've overdone the scar a bit. Mm. I think they've made the scar look a bit too... Well, they're also trying to do the same scar, don't they, based off the Terminator 2 one, because Christian Bale gets that scar in Salvation. Which we'll come to. Oh spoilers. Uh, I think the scar in the first movie. Oh no, yeah. it is the second movie, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, you know that was enough. It's subtle, but this one, I think they've kind of gone for some kind of. It's almost like a Bowie fucking <laughs> lightning bolt. Fighting bulb. machines. R.I.P. Bowie. We are fucking gutted that you are no longer with us. Just put, be burn a candle for him this evening. 
he seems to be wearing some form of All Saints leather jacket. Yeah, he's look, he's a bit too slick, isn't it's it, the jacket? Uh, yeah, it's actually, do you know what? Looking at him right now, he kind of looks a bit Gestapo-like, do you <laughs> think? <laughs> Nazi-like outfits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a with a burnt American flag behind him. Well, I suppose every director tries to put their stamp on it, doesn't it? That's why, like, what's the, f- that? the what's future that? doesn't really kind of. Uh, what's the massive thing he stood mas- on? Is it some kind of? Thing? I'm assuming it's like a flying HK. Oh, ah. Uh, Maybe I don't know. Hook, it's a hook. So he's off the grid. Yeah. But yet he's working. Well, he's doing a cash in hand day laborer's job on a building site, I guess. Do they still do that these days? Probably not, and you need to have an address to kind of be paid, so because you can't get a bank account otherwise. So they didn't really think well, that one through. They, they did not think that one through. Uh, and the fact that he's just like, oh, you know, I do this, my dad. Like, but you're still drinking Budweiser. Yeah. Alcohol will not solve your problems. Just change your name. Just, <laughs> just, move, change just your move, name. move to Thailand, man, and live for nothing and fuck Thai boys. Uh, do we know what what's the bridge he sat on? Because I know absolutely nothing about America. I don't know. I mean, it's probably a famous bridge. I had to kind of cross a bridge when I lived in East LA, which that looks like where it is because it's like far outside of the city. Mm. Uh, but basically, they, cover, they cross the storm drains, basically, which is the thing in Terminator 2 that he chases John Connor down in the truck. I ran him over in my truck. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that's that. That's that's about that. That is should that. We, should we play the little... Uh, Sprex that he did. We can do. Yeah, I think we should. Shall I do it? Do it. You stopped Judgment Day. I should feel safe. But I don't. So I live off the grid. No phone. No address. No one and nothing can find me. How does he book cinema tickets? <laughs> I've erased all connections to the past. But as hard as I try, I can't erase my dreams. How does he order on Amazon? <laughs> Nightmare. Just take a Valium, dude. That shit will knock you straight out. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the underwater skulls thing. Why is it just skulls? No, there is a torso. There's a rib cage oh, okay. to the far right, and that was something else I was going to say. There looks like some form of like machinery under there as well. But do you not also think he's got a really weak voice? Yeah, he's just slightly miscast. I think that's basically the problem. Uh, I don't mean, I don't know why. It says the other costs basically for the rest of the cast. Uh, what well is thirty-five million? Obviously, to pay the actors. Arnold Schwarzenegger in twenty-nine point two five of that, plus twenty percent of the gross. Uh, Arnold's perks are 1.5 million. The rest of the cast, inclusive of everyone, the principal cast, I assume, is Claire Danes, Christina Loken, Nick Stahl, mm. was 3.85 million. So I guess they just got over like a million, one million, each one million dollars, dollars each. So they probably got like a million pounds each. If that had been you, would you be a little bit pissed that you got paid so much less? <laughs> no, because I wouldn't have ever seen that amount of money. No, because the pedigree of Arnold is people will be coming out once of the Terminator. You can't really have the Terminator without Arnold, as we've found in uh, Salvation. Yeah. Although on a podcast the other day, some, someone said three was the worst and Salvation no. was better than three. Well, I actually, used to think that until I watched do you it. Know, do you know what? I th- I've only ever seen this film once and I actually saw it in the cinema and I came out and I was just so... Just disheartened, Bereft, disillusioned, crying. and just like I've literally just lost two hours of my life that I will never <laughs> get back ever. And I, lo- I love going to the cinema, and it was something we never normally do, but because it was Terminator, it was like a family outing. And I think we actually, I think we might have gone to Crawley, like to oh one, you of, the boat to one of the big cinemas. Ooh. But since then, I think we have discovered Guess. that round here, Dorking is the best one. I mean, yeah, I've never been to the IMAX in London. Oh, you will. 24th. But I think the, the sound in Dorking is fucking amazing and it's a decent sized screen well there we have it well there we have it uh, by the way another thing are these said buildings real they postponed judgment day but judgment day the central thread of this film is they just kind of changed the date of it yeah. and it's going to happen no matter what so it kind of shits on the principle of the last film which is there is no fate but what we make for ourselves yeah but it was a woman that said it point taken <laughs> woman is stupid I'm completely wrong so this is the best one of the five <laughs> I was going to say four, and I was like, there's another one, five. <laughs> um, when he's on the building site, those buildings behind don't actually look real. Yeah, they are. Are they actually real? Yeah. Fuck 
don't know. Is it like cardboard? <coughs> anyway, CGI? now we've got through that. Are they real skulls? Trivialist flat. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll give you a little bit of insight. Oh, and there's and there's this thing over here. Oh, it's gone now. The skulls in the future scenes. Now I'm not sure if that the uh, as we're kind of like underwater and it rises up and you see the skull like front and center. I think the ones in the distance because it wouldn't be the ones at the front. That's probably a real sc real skull. Okay. The other skulls in the distance are actually uh, ping pong balls. Ping pong balls. That's what it says here. Fuck off. Yeah. Where do you get your facts from? Uh, the next episode. <laughs> I scrolled down. Share the scroll. He's not even riding a Harley Davidson. No, he's trying to be low key. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do we know what bike that is? Uh, no, we can't really see it. Can't, I just can't fucking see it. Yeah. Uh, got anything else you want to say about this particular episode? Either? I don't know. He just looks. <laughs> Just, just an odd. It is very odd. He just looks like a blonde monkey man to me. Yeah. Blonde Nazi monkey man. <laughs> Nazi monkeys. Blonde Nazi monkey man. That's what we're going to call this episode. <laughs> Amazing. I never get to. Tune it. in tomorrow, folks. We'll actually be back on track. We'll have uh, loads of facts to talk about. <laughs> Ellie won't be such so broken by a Monday at work. I've do you know what though? I feel better already. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's good. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> we didn't hit the music. We did. Oh no, we did. Fuck. <laughs> uh, come back tomorrow. We'll have uh, <laughs> episodes four till six for you. We're getting through this film two minutes at a time. Oh, yeah. I've been Ethan McKinley. I've been Ellie Fitzgerald. That was the two minute ten minute. <laughs> the T322. Two, three, two, two. I've got a good time. Baby. I am Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I'm stupid in my head. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. Big square hair. I'm a movie star, and I'm bigger than you. And I'm very handsome, big muscly guy.
then I shoot you with my big gun.